As more big emerging markets join the BRICS plus nations, the grouping could give the global south a greater voice in world affairs and challenge the domination of existing institutions. The 10 BRICS plus nations account for half the world's population and two-fifths of trade, and include major energy producers and importers. Twelve more nations have applied. The bloc is starting to build institutions with important implications for energy trade, international finance, supply chains, and technological research. Global companies will need to factor geopolitics into their investment strategies and strengthen their capacity to capture the opportunities and mitigate the risks of BRICS expansion. As attention focuses on wars in Eastern Europe and the Middle East and mounting tensions between the world's great powers, a structural shift in the global order has been quietly underway. Large developing nations are exerting greater influence in world economic affairs and are beginning to build alternatives to Western-led institutions. At this movement's core is a formal intergovernmental grouping known as the BRICS Plus. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. The grouping includes five long-standing members, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, as well as five that joined in January 2024 or have been invited, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. Together, these 10 nations account for around 40% of both crude oil production and exports. They also account for one quarter of global GDP, two-fifths of global trade and goods, and nearly half of the world's population. Ang and other dozen nations that have applied for membership, including dynamic emerging markets such as Thailand, Vietnam, and Bangladesh, would raise the group's share to one-third of global GDP. The growing BRICS Plus gives emerging markets the opportunity to align on global topics and new economic opportunities. A larger BRICS challenges the dominance of existing global institutions, such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, that are strongly influenced by the West. It also further weakens the relevance of the G20, a grouping founded in 1999 to seek economic policy alignment among the largest industrialized and developing economies. Indeed, the G20 is fraying at both ends. Its seven most economically advanced members are strengthening their ties through the G7, while its six large developing economies are asserting their own voices within in BRICS Plus. BRICS Plus creates a forum that, at minimum, gives emerging markets the opportunity to align on global topics and new opportunities to promote mutual economic development and growth. And it's evolving steadily, as it begins building political and financial institutions and a payment mechanism for executing transactions, there are important potential implications for the future of energy trade, international finance, global supply chains, monetary policy and technological research. As a result, global companies will need to factor these new geopolitical and economic realities into their investment strategies. They should also strengthen their capacity to capture the opportunities and to mitigate risk that they engender. Leaders of the original BRICS nations held their first summit in 2009 to discuss reforming international financial institutions, which they believed did not adequately address the interests of the Global South. Aside from the United Nations and G20, which included all five BRICS, there was no major forum where emerging markets could discuss their own economic and geopolitical agendas. Development assistance and funding for infrastructure through financial institutions established largely by Western powers after World War II often came with challenging strings attached. There has been skepticism from the beginning over whether BRICS would evolve into a functioning bloc, but over the years, these nations have been drawing nearer to each other economically. Trade in goods among BRICS economies has considerably outpaced trade between the BRICS and G7 nations, leading to greater intra-BRICS trade intensity. Decades of rapid growth have also given many of these economies far more weight in the global economy, both as producers and consumers. Because many of these nations are engaged with both advanced economies and China, which is perceived as an economic and trade superpower, they can create another coalition less dependent on the West. Recent crises have added momentum to BRICS expansion. Several big developing nations that are aligned with neither NATO nor Russia resisted pressure to adhere to Western-imposed sanctions on Moscow in response to the invasion of Ukraine. Others have complained that G7 nations' initiatives to combat climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic did not take their needs into account.
BRICS Plus institutions have been slowly evolving through regular meetings, joint initiatives, and formal bodies. Yet grounds for skepticism over BRICS Plus capacity to become an effective institution remain. This grouping includes countries that are very diverse in terms of political systems, institutional frameworks, economic models, and cultural backgrounds. It even includes geopolitical rivals, for example, relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran, as well as between China and India, remain strained. A so-called China shock of low-cost exports of everything from steel and chemicals to machinery could also raise trade tensions within the group. The expansion, moreover, is heavily tilted toward the Middle East, so further regional balance may be required as the group grows. A stronger BRICS Plus could have a significant global impact in energy, trade networks, infrastructure, monetary policy, and technology. Five ways BRICS Plus can shift the world order BRICS Plus can make a significant global impact in the following five areas. Energy. BRICS Plus brings together both some of the world's biggest energy producers and buyers. With the addition of Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAA, BRICS Plus member states account for around 32% of world output of natural gas and 43% of crude oil. If Kazakhstan, Kuwait, and Bahrain are admitted, those shares will rise further. BRICS Plus nations also account for 38% of global petroleum imports, led by China and India. If all new applicants are admitted, that would rise to 55%. During times of volatility in energy markets, having many of the biggest energy buyers and sellers within the same group could give rise to a parallel energy trading system. That would allow for transactions among BRICS plus economies outside the Western-led financial system and potential future sanction programs, and it would perhaps give them the ability to influence oil prices. Trade networks. Trade has been a major driver of the economic development of BRICS plus. The share of global trade and goods transacted among the group's current members more than doubled to 40% from 2002 through 2022. This trend becomes clearer when looking at the increasing dependence of specific BRICS plus economies on trade with fellow BRICS plus members. China's growing role as a supplier of industrial and consumer goods, as well as an importer of commodities, has been a key force for integration. China has become a major market for Brazilian soybeans and iron ore, for example, and a major exporter of advanced goods such as electric vehicles, solar panels, and heavy machinery. Western sanctions relating to the war in Ukraine, moreover, have led to the diversion of Russian exports to BRICS plus markets, notably China and India. Although a handful of BRICS plus members have free trade agreements, FTAs, with each other through blocks such as the Gulf Cooperation Council and Pan Arab Free Trade Area, there is currently no FTA covering the entire 10 nation group. India withdrew mid negotiation from Asia's regional comprehensive economic partnership, which includes China. BRICS Plus could, however, serve as a forum for widening intra BRICS Plus market access in various ways. It already convenes a digital economy working group, for example, and has established a framework for promoting cooperation in professional and business services trade, infrastructure, and development financing. The greatest progress so far in BRICS Plus institution building has been in project and development finance. The new Development Bank NDB, capitalized at $100 billion, largely complements China's Belt and Road Initiative. Egypt, India, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and UAA are also shareholders in the China-led Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank AIIB and have received loans from it. By 2023, the NBD and AIIB combined had committed more than $71 billion in credit across a range of sectors, including infrastructure, public health, and clean energy. Such projects generate significant revenue for BRICS Plus companies. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.